Drunken sailors, so the saying goes. We're not tight, but we're none too bright. Great Scott, I don't suppose. We've lost our way, and we've lost our pay. And to make the thing complete, we've been and gone and lost a blooming fleet. Has anybody seen our ship, the HMS Peculiar? We've been on shore for a month or more. And when we see the captain, we will get what for. He, ho, me hearties, sing glory, hallelujah. A lady bold as she could be, pinched our whistle at the golden key. Now we're in between the devil and the deep blue sea. Has anybody seen our ship? Nah, nah, nah. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, what do you call a person in the theatre who can sing and dance and act? A triple threat. Very good. Let me ask you this. Why, oh, why do the wrong people travel when the right people stay back home and post on Facebook? <laughs> why the right people stay back home? It's all on YouTube. Why the right people stay back home? I'm merely asking why the right people stay back home. Stage, Mrs. Worthington. Don't, don't have a stage. But look at those bandied legs, you prove she hasn't got a chance. In addition to which, the son of a bitch can neither sing nor dance. She's a vile girl, uglier than all mortals. In one look at her has put me in a tearing bloody rage. That sufficed, Mrs. Worthington. Christ, Mrs. Worthington. <laughs> don't put your daughter on the stage. Because Noel was a Londoner to his bootstraps and he was patriotic to the core. Mind you, the tabloid press did question his patriotism when a satiric song that he wrote towards the end of World War II was played on the BBC. I'd like to sing it for you now. When all is said and done Though they gave us culture, science, art and music to excess They also gave us two world wars and Dr. Rudolf Hess Let's employ with them a sort of strength to joy with them They're better than us at honest manly fun Let's let them feel their swell again And bomb us all to hell again But don't let's be beastly to the Hun You know, I once sung this, sang this song to a German friend of mine and I got halfway through and I stopped because I felt a bit embarrassed about it and I said, I'm sorry, I've never sung this to a German person before. And he said, oh, don't worry, he said, I'm not armed. <laughs> Two pairs of tights of King Arthur's knights have completely worn away. Sing A for the stately homes of England. The stately homes of England, though once our soul abode. Now welcome paying guests, arriving by bus load. We start them out at ye old gift shop, and hope that they shop until they drop. Ten quid will get your scones, sir, 
served by her ladyship, who's at their beck and call. How the mighty fall! We rent out for the summer the old gamekeeper's flat. What would Downton Abbey's Mr. Carson say to that? But we hate the beer and the weather here, so we bug it off to France. Bon chance for the stage, the old coffee. London Pride London Pride has been handed down to us London Pride is a flower that's free London Pride means our own dear town to us And our pride it forever will be Oh, Liza, see the cost of barrels Vegetable marrows and the fruit wild pie. Oh, Liza, little London sparrows, Covent Garden market where the costers cry. Oh, what they used to do was get these injections of sheep glands, and they would do it in these clinics in Switzerland. Now, Noel Coward lived in Switzerland for many years, next door to Joan Sutherland and Richard Bonning, and so it was quite easy for him to pop off to one of these clinics every now and then for a bit of a treatment. And he was there on one occasion, and uh, he was waiting, and so they said to him, Mr Coward, if you look out the window, you will see the very flock of sheep from whom we will take the glands for your procedure this afternoon. So Noel looks out the window and he sees this beautiful flock of sheep, all white except for one black sheep. So Coward turns to the tenant and says, Ah, well, I see you're expecting Paul Ropes and after me, are you? <laughs> Senorita Nina from Argentina despised the tango, although she never was a girl to let a man go. She would not sacrifice her principles for sex. She looked with scorn on the gyrations of her relations who did the conga and said that if she had to stand it any longer she'd lose all dignity and bring their silly necks. She said that frankly she was blinded by all the over-advertised romantic charms and then she got more bloody-minded and told them where to put the topic palms. But I think that the most perfect tense is the present tense because it's the only one we can live in here and now. For example, only in the present tense can we fall in love. Here on this gay, glorious day, how can I keep my feet from dancing? Some entrancing tune makes me want to fly higher than the moon in the sky. Whom can I tell? What can I say? How can I breathe and not betray to every soul I see? What today means to me? To that bar on the Piccola Marina Where love came to Mrs. Wentworth Brewster Hot flushes of delight suffused her Right round the bend she went, picture her astonishment Day in, day out she would get about Because she thought she was no longer on the shelf Night out, night in, knocking at the gin She cried, but no, I think you laugh, I think you leave, I think yourself <laughs> Just for fun, three young sailors from the sea now I'd like to end with a final bit of white man rap written by the man that we've been celebrating tonight, Mr. Noel Coward. In the tropical climes at a certain times of day, when all the citizens retire to tear their clothes off and burst by, well, it's one of those rules that the greatest fools obey. The sun is far too sultry, and one must avoid his ultraviolet rays. Oh, have a good, have a good, have a good, boom! That's the Oh, digga, 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 dig
lovely street to protect you from the glare. In a man I stand to the hats like place where the Britishers won't wear. At both noon, the ladies swoon and no good work is done. But bad dogs and Englishmen go up to the midday sun. Oh, it's such a surprise for the Eastern eyes to see. Though the English are eat quite impervious to heat. When a white man rides up in their divides in glee. The simple creatures will be really baby so that they be on the tree. <laughs> oh, haven't we, haven't we, haven't we hard to save old ladies? Pay attention, oh, digga 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 do. Oh, it seems such a shame that when the English claim the earth, they give rise to such a lot of dear math. Ha ha ha, now the dog is going to be coming up to the place. I'm not Louisa was a movie queen before she'd achieved the age of sweet sixteen. Long before Cagney threw those girls about, little Louisa tossed her curls about. Later, when the talkies came, the whole world resounded to her fame. Each time she married, every daily paper carried headlines praising her name. And not only headlines, but photographs and interviews. Everything she did was news and held the world in thrall. Some said she read lines better than Marlena could. No other entertainer could compete with her at all. But regardless of the fact that she could sing and dance and act, she was a triple threat. And her furniture that wasn't a little robbery. And regardless of her gems, which were hers, not MGM's, her life was one long Mockery. Louisa was terribly lonely. Success brought her naught but despair. Oh, she derived little fun from the Oscar she'd won, and none from her home in Bel Air. She said that she was weary of living. On this bestial, terrestrial plane When friends came to visit Their hands she would clutch Crying, tell me, why is it I suffer so much I've only, if only, if only My life wasn't quite such a strain And soon after that She was terribly lonely Oh 